I'm more confident about Tommy beating Jake Paul than anything I've ever been confident about in my life. And Francis Nagano is a gigantic man. He looks like a man. He's imposing. He's 18, 19, 20 stone. You know, he looks and built like a dinosaur. You can't write those men off. A very belated Happy New Year to you. Um, how, how's your Christmas been, your New Year? Uh, been up it's to been much? quiet. Enjoyed it, you know, a bit of quiet time. I've had a broken ankle right through it, you know, so that put a bit of a down on it. But listen, all in all, it was a good one. Lots of family time? Yeah, needed, much needed, so and all. Just plenty of TV, overindulgence. What have you been watching? Anything good in particular? Just talking pictures, black and white TV, that's all I like. <laughs> uh, we'll start... Selfish when it comes to me in the box. <laughs> Always, you've got to be. Anyway, we'll start <laughs> off, we'll, we'll go into the questions in the boxing. Uh, it looks like Jake Paul and Tommy Fury are going to fight, going to multiple sources. Um how close is that to happening? Can you confirm if it is definitely going ahead? Yeah, it's good, definitely going ahead. You know, we're just waiting for the final things to get sorted out, you know, but it's uh, as far as I'm concerned, we're 99 and three quarter percent there. Yeah. Uh, you, you've been very outspoken on your views of Jake Paul. I have. Um, how confident are you that Tommy can beat him this time round? Obviously, the, the previous two fights they've been called off this time. We all hope it goes ahead the third time, lucky. But um, how confident are you that Tommy can beat Jake? To be honest with you, I'm more confident about Tommy beating Jake Paul than anything I've ever been confident about in my life, you know. So, like I say, what I've seen of Jake Paul in the past, what I'm seeing with Tommy in the gym, even early stages of camp, is far too much for the, what I've been seeing with Jake Paul. Unless the transformed Jake Paul comes to the ring on the 25th of February, then it's a one-horse race. And I'm not being derogatory towards Jake Paul. I think he's a very clever young man, a good businessman, promotes himself well, millions of followers, multimillionaire, so that makes him a better chap than me. So, But it doesn't stop me from talking about boxing, how I see it. One man is a genuine fighter who's been round world champions since he's been a kid on world-class fighters and actually shared the ring with them on numerous occasions, leather flying everywhere, and that his lumps have come out the other side. So I know the public have not seen Tommy really in the ring under the light do what they think he needs to do, but it's the time on a learning curve boxing. He's at that learning curve in his career where we have to take our time with him. We have to get the fights right. It's a slow process. He had no amateur contest, only 10 junior bouts, so it's neither in or there. You know, but the progression he's made with just nine fights is incredible. And what I'm seeing in the gym is heavyweight punching power, accuracy, speed, strength. And, you know, at this stage in the camp, he's showing he can do the rounds at an eye pace, comfortable, and keep them going with good class sparring. You know, so it's the best he's ever looked going into a fight as well. At this stage in his, at this stage of the camp, we're well ahead because he's not stopped training. See, because he was expecting all this, and I said, "Listen, keep in the gym, keep ticking over, so we don't get caught off guard." Tommy asked to knock him out because if he won eight nil on points, he probably won't get it. So we're not trained to leave it to the judges. We're trained to knock him out, and make a statement, and come the twenty sixth of February, Tommy will be a very, very famous man. In the world yeah. of his oyster, and thank you for Jake Paul for providing the opportunity. <laughs> a lot of people have made Jake Paul the favourites. What would you say to those people that have are doubting Tommy or are not backing Tommy? What would you say to those people? Well, you know, <laughs> those people who's making Jake Paul a favourite over Tommy don't know boxing. The casuals ask some of Tommy's recent sparring partners <laughs> whether they think Jake Paul or Tommy's going to win, <laughs> and these are good class fighters, my friend. Yeah, good class fighters and they're being handled and damaged. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, it's just casuals having their opinion. Everybody's entitled to one. Let them have it. But they're going to be very, very sick and depressed on the 26th of February when they see that Jake Paul isn't the boxer he pretends to be. You know, I only see it going one way. Jake, Jake Paul either retiring on his stool because he can't cope with the pressure or he gets not called out. There's two ways for him. On the both L's. Take your pick. 
<laughs> we're going to move on to the next uh, Fury. We're going to move on to Tyson now. There's yeah. a lot of speculation who he's going to fight. Alexander Usyk seems to be really pushing for that. Yeah. Recently posed by the swimming pool in his trunks, calling out Tyson. Uh, what have you made of all that? And um, would you make Tyson an overwhelming favourite to go and beat Usyk if, if anything like that got agreed? Again, when you when you well you, you're fighting a blown up middleweight, like I've just said in the previous cast, he got over a swimming pool the other day and he looks like his body departed from him. You know, I don't know what's happened to him. He just looked like a bag of bones getting out of a swimming pool. A pair of shoulders, well, as big as I've seen young ladies with bigger pairs of shoulders. You know, so at the end of the day, he's just got no structure, no frame at all to mess with the gypsy king. At 20 stone entering the ring and six foot nine power house. He's got skill and heart and can do 25 rounds. You know, so at the end of the day, Yusek is a good little fighter at middleweight and light heavyweight, maybe up and cruiser. You know, but he can't mess with them big guys. You know, I was shocked when he came out the pool. But how has he got a body like he's got fighting Anthony Joshua to that poor? excuse of a man getting out of a swimming pool. What did he do in between? What did he do? You told me. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe he's trying. Who knows? Maybe, maybe he's trying. <laughs> maybe he's trying. We'll never I know. know. And you know. Is is there anyone on the planet that could beat Tyson Fury? Do you not think? at the minute, no. I'm sticking Clearly. my neck out to say not at the minute, confidently, no. It's... Joe Joyce, big, strong man, the juggernaut, but he hasn't got the skill to beat Tyson. And Tyson can box for 12 rounds on the back foot, front foot, side foot, whichever foot you want, and he comes at a clear winner. But Joe Joyce, he'd be there all night coming forward, chugging away, one pace, you know, what he does best, you know, and uh, really take Joe Joyce out of the equation. Who is the? Who is the? No yeah. one. Yeah. We'll move on. Another person who's called him out is uh, Francis Ngannou. He seems like he might be making his way into boxing out of the UFC. Uh, he sort of highlighted AJ and Fury as people. Um, is that something that could be a realistic option one day? Do you think he would even stand a chance? Let me tell you something. That's a fight I like, you know, because you know what? When unconve unconventional boxers get in the ring, they do stuff normal pros don't do. And you can get caught out, can't you? And Francis Nagano is a gigantic man. He looks like a man. He's imposing, you know. He's six foot odd, you know. He's 18, 19, 20 stone. You know, he, he looks and built like a dinosaur. You can't write those men off. And he's a big, strong man who can throw punches from angles. Tyson's not used to him coming from. And you can get caught, and a man of that size can knock you straight up in the air like a kite and cold you. He's a big dude. You know, he can use his legs, he can use his feet. He'll have the... Francis Agano would be strong up close. He'd be like hitting a wall. You know, and he'd be fetching punches from what down low over the top, round the sides, big looping shots. You know, um, if you're not trained and expected to catch all this and miss them, which it's hard to get sparring with someone like Francis Nagano, could be very interesting. Would you, would you argue it'd be a tougher test than maybe some of the other boxes? It's a tougher test than the, the Ukrainian rabbit, <laughs> it's a tougher test than you said, ping, 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 ping. Even Joe yeah. Joyce as well, tougher test than Joe. I tell you what, there won't be much in it. You know, Big Joe and Francis Nagano, they're the same stature, aren't they? They've got that big methodical come forward way. They can keep it going. But again, Nagano, you know, Joe's a proper boxer. He trains like a boxer. He is a boxer. He's a good boxer. But these many here, they're unorthodox. You can be expecting a jab and all of a sudden they fetch something up off the floor and you're right under the gym with it. it. It can happen. I've seen it happen. You know, it'd be interesting. But Tyson... Not saying it because of my son, he's proven that he can cope with any situation and anybody in it, you know. So they will make him a favourite and the best in the world in all categories. Yes, I do. But there is dangers. And these people like Francis Nagano, they they bring that danger. There are a lot of boxers who have sort of in and MMA fighters, they're sort of doing a lot of swapping and so we've seen people try their hands at different sports combat sports, but they are very different in their ways. Um, why do you think it is becoming more common that fighters are moving across the different sports? And do you think, do you almost admire them for doing that in a way? Because it is a completely, you know, you are going out your comfort zone, trying your hand at a different thing, especially going straight to the professional area. You're going up against people who 
more often than not, are very experienced. So um, do you have a lot of admiration for it? Is it something that you'd like to see more of? Absolutely, you know, because credit goes to him. Even Jake Paul, fair play to Jake Paul. He's crossed over to the boxing world. It's very difficult. You know, I don't know what he's, he's done, a bit of other stuff for these MMA guys. He's only been boxing MMA guys. And to take on Tommy, you know, fair play to him. And again, it's great for the sport of boxing. It's a combat sport. If you're wearing gloves and boots, you're a boxer, aren't you, today? You know, and people want to see it. They want to see interesting stuff. That's why MMA has got a big following. Because they knock the absolute S out of one another every time. It's value for money. And they bring that to the boxing world. And don't get me wrong. You know, they're, they're dangerous people, aren't they? They're tough, dangerous people is used to getting kneed in the face, let alone punched and kicked in the face, let alone punched. So they're tough and they're dangerous. And you've only got to come across one that wants to win and that little bit super talented in his field and you've got a problem. You've got and a problem. The, the last one from me, um, the last time you spoke to us at Joe, uh, you told us that you insured your nuts for $10 million. Um, how are they these days? Are they still going well? You have to have to miss it, that. <laughs> but last time, it was going really well. Still going well. Might going not really if, well. If Tommy beats Jake... That's the only part of my body that is going really well. <laughs> if Tommy beats <laughs> Tommy, Tommy beat Jake, you're going to add a few extra uh, few extra figures on that price? Jake, well, we'll have to have a chat at a later date about that. <laughs> no worries. That, that's all from me, questions-wise. Um, I'm all done, questions-wise, so... um. Thank you very much for your time, John. God Appreciate bless you, son. Happy New yeah. Year and a prosperous Happy one, even, even more an healthy one.